Ok. Buongiorno, l'ultima battaglia oggi. <ride> It's very hard for me to uh, follow uh, and elaborate on such an excellent presentation. Uh, but I've been asked to uh, say a few words on the possibility of uh, Italy leaving the Eurozone. I want to stress that this is not necessarily the first option. I think, in fact, this is a last resort that should be taken with great care and when other, all other options have been exhausted. I say this because there are no easy options available to you. And I don't think we, can, we would be honest if we sugarcoated this. So this is a political judgment that you, the Italian people, will have to make. It would be presumptuous of me as a foreigner to advise you on what course of action to take. So I'm just going to give a very few specific options as to what would be entailed if Italy were to leave the Euro. I have a little paper called Exiting the Euro. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is what would have to happen first of all. To exit the Euro, for a nation to regain its uh, currency sovereignty, Here are the following changes that would have to occur. First of all, you would have to reintroduce a new currency or the old lira under monopoly issue. Within this currency, the national government could purchase anything that was for sale in that currency, including domestic unemployed labor. At the same time, the central bank, the Bank of Italy, would receive a refund of the capital it had contributed to the European Central Bank. And it would also receive back all of the foreign currency reserves that it had moved over to the EMU system. Uh, the nation's central bank would then regain control of monetary policy, which means that it, and not the bond market, could set interest rates along the yield curve and add to bank reserves if necessary. Okay, now here's where it gets more complicated. There is clearly some existing sovereign debt that is denominated in euros. This is a uh, short-term problem um, because the nation that wanted to exit, Italy for example, would now have to deal with a foreign currency debt problem. Now to some extent some of the transfers back to the central banking system from the ECB would help to offset the Euro exposure upon exit from the Euro. But I'm not going to lie to you. It would be part of a painful adjustment process. And you may ultimately have to default. Uh, you would at that point have to enter into a negotiated settlement whereby the creditors accepted your local currency or nothing. Okay, so uh, 
this, this is, I think, the, the key issues. Now, now, some say that the financial markets would make it very difficult for a nation to exit. They talk about, for example, the dreaded ratings agencies who would mark you down in the event of a default and force higher rates on local debt. And my response to that is that they're doing that anyway. <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> um, I would also add that we have been downgraded in the United States and our borrowing costs are still, have actually gone lower since the time of that downgrade. Remember, these are the same organizations that were calling toxic subprime mortgages, AAA, as recently as 2007. Mm -hmm. I think even Mr. Berlusconi has more credibility than the ratings agencies. <laughs> Now, we would all stress that it's very important to retain currency sovereignty, but it doesn't give you carte blanche to do whatever you want. When we talk about the pursuit of public purpose, which we do a lot in NMT, we are discussing ways that the government will spend so that it promotes employment, at a very minimum, jobs in a public sector job guarantee program for those that are currently unemployed so that we can generate real output growth. The government has to use its newly found fiscal freedom to advance public purpose and not to waste public spending on unproductive pursuits. So what do I mean by unproductive pursuits? Uh, well, obviously, major handouts to zombie banks counts as an unproductive use of government money. You want to give money, as we like to say in America, to Main Street rather than Wall Street. Now, there are clearly going to be practical issues involved in changing back to the lira. Uh, first of all, you'd have to amend the computer codes. But you've had some experience with that. Uh, you all remember the Y2K bug. Um, a lot of hard work had to be done to ensure that we did not have a meltdown in our computer system. So, then how do we support the new lira, the new currency? Well, the Italian government would have to announce that it will begin taxing exclusively in the new currency, in lira. And it will also announce that it will make all payments going forward in lira, not in euros. That's the main thing. The government can now provision itself and continue to function on a sustainable basis. So what will be the value of the new lira? Well, that really depends. That's where the markets do come into play. The new currency will be allowed to float. The exchange will be determined between willing buyers and sellers at market prices. Now, as I said, about the existing euro debt, that will be a subject of negotiation. But now the leverage rests with the government, not with the markets. It can be a long process. Argentina is still uh, negotiating and litigating claims from the time when it depegged its currency in 2001. 
That hasn't stopped Argentina from growing or functioning as a real economy. Same thing in Russia. Uh, the ruble collapsed in 1998 from 6 to 28 against the dollar. The banking system was highly disrupted. The capital markets did not function for a number of months. But today, we still have a ruble. We still have a Russian banking system. Russia has survived. And the other question is, what to do about euro bank deposits and euro bank loans? Well, for now, they remain in place. There is nothing to stop Italy, uh, ordinary Italians, from using euros or having euro deposits. Just like there's nothing stopping you from having dollar deposits or British pounds uh, uh, deposits. Panama has decided to, to dollarize. Nothing that the United States has done would prevent, can prevents Panama from continuing to use the dollar. Okay, so here I think is where the job guarantee program that Stephanie has discussed is extremely important. I think it's absolutely essential that this be one of the first programs that is introduced by the government because the first thing you want to do is ensure that there is minimal unemployment. And for any given size government, taxes should be adjusted to ensure that the labor force that works for that wage be kept to a minimum. So low, as low taxes as possible. Remember, your taxes are no longer funding your spending. You have fiscal freedom. Now, there is some talk about uh, tax evasion. How do you enforce a tax? Personally, I think that this uh, is a problem which is overstated uh, in Italy. But I think you can maximize uh, compliance by introducing a tax on land, a national real estate tax. Obviously, it's much more difficult to avoid. You can't move land around. Mm. So it seems to me that's a, an effective way to collect taxes. Uh, compliance would be maximized because if the tax isn't paid, then the state can simply sell the property at auction. Everybody contributes either as an owner of the property or as a renter, as the owner's costs would ultimately be passed through to the renters. And I'd probably substantially reduce taxes such as the VAT, because that would uh, penalize the ability to spend, and it's a very regressive tax. Finally, I would say that all Lira bank deposits would be fully insured by the government. I would not uh, insure euro deposits, but I would insure Lira deposits. Banks would be government regulated and supervised. They would be prohibited from any secondary market activity which means no derivatives, no credit default swaps, no trading against your clients. Bankers are there to lend, provide capital for businesses and consumers so that the economy can grow, not to bet against their consumers as they do today. And I'd probably include substantial capital buffer requirements, such as up for around 15 to 20 percent. 
Those are just a few specific suggestions I have. I know we're going to discuss them in greater detail on the round table, but I thought I would introduce these now as there had been considerable demand for this sort of presentation yesterday during the question period. So thank you very much.